that's nice and secure down there. That's not going to move. And then I'll put some more MC down and brush that over. I, I use a brush. I don't use my hands. This is this is a revolutionary thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we eat with our hands too. <laughs> but wash your hands before you do any artwork. Yeah. Yeah. So what he's teaching you is basically a, a paper sizing technique, and you can do that with all kinds of different uh, chemical sizes for different properties. Yeah. So this paper is like really floppy and feels awful to fold with, but. If you just do this, the methyl cellulose will soak into the paper, and when you peel it off, it'll be nice and stiff and crisp, and it'll be suitable for folding after work. So if you just wanted to do one sheet, you could stop here, uh, and but then I'll uh, do a second sheet, and then I just do the same thing here as well. And this is something, uh, Richard, if uh, or origami dough paper already has some sizing in it, but if it was an unsized sheet of paper, would you apply methyl cellulose on top of that top sheet as well? We generally don't do that because there's plenty of it inside. And I might also mention the fact that a lot of people are concerned about the thickness of paper and the density, or they say grams per square meter. Now, with handmade paper, a lot of those values kind of go out the window because there's a third quality of handmade paper that I call compressibility. All right? Now we put a lot of MC on these because what you're doing is you're filling a paper, the handmade origami dough paper is like a sponge. And one of the reasons it's so nice for sculpting is that you could compress the antennae of your, of your insects and the legs of your uh, critters. It's that compressibility that is important to sculpting but the MC, being water reversible, allows you to still compress that sponge to make really thin, compressed, dense structures wow. when it dries. So, were there, was there another can? No? Let's do my head. Okay. Did you yeah. try to uh, add some silica gel to dry it faster? Why would you do that? Uh, <laughs> just on top and then remove it. I've never done that. We've never done that, and you'd have to cover the whole area. And then the trouble with silica gel is uh, then you have to, it's like, it's, it's almost like a house pet. You know, <laughs> you have to manage it. So it pulls in a lot of water, and then for you to use it again, you have to dehydrate it. Some Make people it. put it in a low oven, or if you have a dry atmosphere in the but home. There's not as much water in this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so it's, it's like something you can keep and reuse. Uh -huh. um, but. Um, it, there's no real advantage to Actually, drying it wonder, sooner. I have a, an idea yeah. that might be an advantage. Yeah, and just yeah. that the, the, the less time that the paper is wet, if you have something that's bleeding through, maybe it won't bleed. Oh, <coughs> someone back there talked about bleeding uh, through and so forth. And I, I'd like to address that. And by the way, when someone says bleed through, all right, um, I have an issue with that word because it has two usages. Bleeding in the term of when you have a, a, a reversible ink. So you wet the paper and then the, the ink pigment or some stain migrates with the water through and stains the other paper. All right? That's one kind of bleeding. All right? So you have to be careful that you're not using papers that are going to cause trouble like that. But then there's another kind of bleeding, and I didn't understand the meaning of that until Mark Kirschenbaum asked that question of me at a paper lecture we did at Oregon USA a long time ago. What he was talking about was this. How, say for instance, the darker color can show through. Show through. Like that. Yeah. Now, uh, that, that is called show, show through or shine through or... But let's say you wanted to make a penguin, and this was black paper, and this was the white belly, and you did this, and you back coat it. Look, even not wet, even with no paste holding this together, you get this show through. Is that the kind of bleeding you're talking no, about? No, I'm talking about paper that's dyed. Paper that's dyed, okay. And if it gets wet, yeah. In some, yeah, the sun rays you, the, yeah. the blue will, will be yeah. similar. So for the issue you're talking about, 
where you're going to get a migration of pigment or stain. This is the way to solve it. It's not contact time. This, let's say this is porous and this is the piece of paper that you do not want to be stained. Before you use this for back coating, you need to coat this by itself with methyl cellulose. So you would take this on a board, brush methyl cellulose on it, and let it completely dry. What you're doing is you are protecting it because the methyl cellulose is a sealant. Bear with this for a second. Yeah. Okay. You can see the MC film yeah. on the edge of this. It looks like cellophane. It's actually cellophane. Yeah. Okay. So that is what is actually sealing the one color from the other. Right. So you can seal the paper and that will protect the stain from this migrating uh, past that sealing barrier and actually staining your paper. So you have to protect the paper first by pre-treating it. When you get it wet, it doesn't... The methyl cellulose is quite a barrier. And it does work, because I use that trick all the time. Yes? Is there a way to <coughs> show through? Then the show through is the other issue. <coughs> can I can ask one yes. more question? Yeah. So if you protect it with the, the same layer of methyl cellulose, is it soluble when it's dry, the methyl cellulose, by other part of methyl cellulose? Or yes. I, it, it, I mean, it's reversible with water, if that's uh, what you mean. Yeah. But now the, the thing that you want to be careful about here is that you don't want to super wet your protected sheet. Okay. Now it's already been expanded, it's already been sealed, and then it's been dried. You can take this off, you can expand with water your troublesome sheet, put the methyl cellulose on this. This would be the layer that's on the board. Then you would take this, and you do not need to wet this. It's already been expanded, and it's been treated, and it's nice and stiff. And you can just put that on there, all right, and smooth it out. Now, water will migrate from the methyl cellulose that you put on the, on the trouble paper, and it will slightly soften and make everything, you know, wet. But it's going to slow down or even completely stop the migration of pigment or stain. Now, it, it doesn't work 100% of the time, but that's really your only chance. Another way to deal with this is to take the paper that's going to cause the staining and seal that. Now, the way to do that is you expand this with water, you coat it with methyl cellulose, and then you let it go to what I call the leather hard stage. By itself, you let it dry. It's still going to be gummy. And you do need to paste this around the edge on the board side so it stays restrained. Then you can wet this with water and then you can put it on the gummy side. And because the gummy side is, you know, really gel-like, it acts as a barrier from the preventing the stain from coming through. Again, these are, these are uh, strategies. They're not foolproof. So, like you mentioned earlier, practice with small scraps of the papers you intend to use. You might mention yeah. the, the acrylic barrier. Well, that's, so now, that shine through. Remember the penguin problem? Because I run into this all the time. Don't be shocked. Don't be stunned. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my black paper, all right? Now, let's say this is a nice, heavy sheet of black, and then I want a gossamer, thin, light, white layer that's gonna go on here, and the black's gonna show through. I will take white acrylic paint. It could be spray, or it could be um, out of a tube and thinned and brushed. But I will paint the, this surface white. Huh. All right. Now, I, I let that dry completely. Now, this is going to be inside. Then I put methyl cellulose on all of this, and I put my gossamer thin white piece on there. And then that's back coated. And you won't see any of the black. 
And what you will not know is that there's a paint layer in there. Because you're going to look at this outer surface and it's paper. Because that's what you want on the origami on that side, right? You want the paper. So you may paint with acrylic, uh, water-based acrylic spray or brush uh, a blinding coat. And you would be putting the lighter color on the dark. Um, and you'd always be coating the heavier paper if there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Why put spray in the spray can? In the spray can, can. Ah. yes, yeah. Water-based, water-based yeah, yeah, it's water spray paint. Color. If you go to a, a chain store like Michael's Art, yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't know it's hey, Richard, it's, could you move yeah. back into camera frame sure. for me? Uh, I think we've used a brand called Liquitex, so, yes. which is a spray acrylic. And it comes in many different yeah, colors. Sure, sure. But is that's there archival versus non archival? Acrylic is fairly archival. Yeah. 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 It's a little bit, oh. yeah. So yeah. We, we would yeah. paint the heavier paper, yeah. not necessarily the darker paper. Right. Well, now, see, a lot of things that I know from, from years of experience thinner paper is generally more fragile. And thinner paper allows things to go through to the other side more readily than heavier paper. Now, if I'm going to use that technique of a blinding coat, and I have a choice of thick or thin paper, okay, I'm going to uh, use the thick paper to receive the, 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 the coloring coat. And then I'm going to apply the thinner paper to the outside after it's dry. If I tried to paint the thin paper, let's say that thin gossamer white with the acrylic, guess what? The acrylic's going to go right through to the front of the paper, and the outside of my nice paper is going to look like a layer of paint. So you, 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 if you're using thin paper and you don't want the shine through, you do want um, a paper that's a little bit heftier. Uh, or here's another tip is that if you know which side of the model is going to be mostly involved on the inside of the folding, and you're not worried about migrated uh, paint, because this layer might be mostly on the inside, then you can get away with it. But you, you almost, it's like playing chess. You've got to think a few steps ahead with what you're, with, with what you're, you're, you're dealing with. Yeah. So that rule seems to also confirm with what you stated earlier, where yeah. you want to have the heavier paper on the bottom. So if you apply the rule to have the heavier paper on the bottom, and then you apply the paint onto the heavier paper as well, right. it would still be on the bottom. And then you, so. yeah. Now here's the third remedy for shine through. A triple layer of um, uh, backcoated paper. People think, oh, it's just, we're doing backcoating, it's two pieces of paper. No. Your blinding layer could be a middle layer of paper that's the protective color. And that actually works very well. You could actually paint that, let it dry, paste it in between your two display pieces, and then you won't have any trouble migrating anything. And that also works for the stain problem even if the papers are both the same color. But you can put a barrier layer, that's what that would be called, in the middle. I've often done triple ply um, pieces because of the, of the shine through or show through, or because I had a staining issue. Or, so think about that, you could use three layers, that middle one serving the purpose of the paint layer. Yeah. Or if the two papers that you want to use are kind of soft, you put the really strong layer in the middle. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to grab another book because there's uh, here it is. this book, the okay yeah, Origami yeah. Jewelry, has a, uh, a whole series of back coated, very small elements. But the majority of these are commercial paper that you would find, like a paper source with Japanese printing. Uh, I see this is what they call, I think it's a hemp design. This one has waves. This one has like a traditional Chinese pattern. This one has almost like a batik. And there are foils in here. You can back coat all kinds of papers. But if you want strength, you know, back coat this decorative stuff to some nice handmade washi or kozo, mulberry. 
um, some strong, strong paper. And with the paste on the inside, you don't need to glop the outside. You don't need to spray it with acrylic. You don't need to dip it in epoxy or a spin it in a spinner. So everything in here is pack coated. I won't be putting any glue on this. Oh, you can do whatever you want. Okay. I'd like to share with you a brush pattern that I learned from paper makers in Japan. I've been using this for decades. And this is amazingly helpful. You know, there's always a best way to do something. I learned this from the paper makers at to in Tosa, Washington, Japan, and uh, in Salem, Massachusetts back in the early 1990s, and I got to work with these people. And um, they showed me this brushing pattern. I said, what do you mean brushing pattern? Wow, this is, this is so cool, all right? Now, what I'd like to do, because I don't want to harm this woman. Let's see if um, this can serve.